I love you, Clark. More than ever. It's beautiful! Hi, I'm Jack, and welcome back, because today I'm going to give you guys my review for Season 3 of a hit DC show that I love that came to a close a couple weeks ago, and I'm now giving you all my full thoughts on it. Superman and Lois Season 3, it brings back Tyler Hoechlin and Elizabeth Tulloch as Superman and Lois Lane, and it brings back Alex Garfin as Jordan Kent, with Michael Bishop standing in as the show's new Jonathan Kent. And it brings back a lot of the cast and crew members from the show with some new faces. Let me know down below in the comments, what's your take on Superman and Lois Season 3? I'd love to know that. And with that said, let's get started. Set weeks after the events of season two, season three of the show follows Clark and Lois enjoying the family life once again while also working together at the Smallville Gazette. However, when Lois's work life is put to the test as she and the family come face to face with Bruno Mannheim who promises to change their lives for the worse, Superman must move from heaven and earth to protect the family while stopping new foes in Smallville. If you've been following my channel for the last two years, you would know that I am a big fan of Superman and Lois. Superman is my favorite DC superhero of all time, as much as I love Batman and The Flash. And this show has just been an absolute delight. It's an amazing adaptation off of the Superman mythology and the characters. And for two seasons straight, it has just been a great show with great characters, really good drama. And so as packing a lot of things I love to see from Superman, which is do what Superman does best, be a beacon of hope for the world, while still providing some great spectacle and character dynamics. So ever since the end of season two last year, I was extremely excited to see where season three was going to go now that they're introducing Bruno Mannheim of Intergang and it was introducing us to the show's iteration of Lex Luthor so I was really excited to watch season three as it premiered and was season three another great season Yes, it was. Season three is another great season of the show. That's a step up from last season and it packs heart, emotion, fun, action, and everything I love about the show. Kicking things off with the positives, the visual effects of Superman and Lois has always been incredible from season one all the way to now, and it's the best a CW show has ever looked. And I am happy to say that season three continues the top-notch work from the visual effects department. When it comes to the Superman sequences of him flying in action sequences, and with all these different characters, it is just amazing how good this season looks. Season 1 and 2 look amazing. Season 3 takes it to a whole other level here. There are some shots and sequences here that feel like it came out of a DC movie. And it is just another great season from a visual standpoint. And there are some incredible action sequences in this season as well. With Superman, with Jordan, with Onomatopoeia, with all these different characters. And that's one of my favorite aspects of the show from the Superman side of things is the action captures the weight and the feel of Superman. And season three definitely continues the winning streak of the action, even if it's not quite as prominent in season three as it was in the other two seasons. And the storyline of season three is great. It is a lot better than the season two storylines where as much as I did really like season two, it felt a little bit overstuffed with a lot of storylines happening throughout that season. Season three takes a step back and it feels a lot more focused and streamlined. And despite having 13 episodes rather than 15, the show still manages to tell the story to a very effective result where with 13 episodes, it introduces us to the conflict. We know who our clear villains are, what the stakes are. And so as how each character plays into the story, it feels like every character has something to contribute to the plot rather than just being there for the sake of it. And I was thoroughly invested in the story from beginning to end, whether it's from Lois and Clark's side of things, whether it's from John Henry Irons and his doppelganger's ties to Bruno Mannheim, or whether it's the stuff between Jonathan and Jordan and their lives as teenagers. This season was very investing and it has a really good story from beginning to end. And one of the things that surprised me about season three was that the big part of season three is that Lois has cancer. And this is something that could have been done really poorly and it could have been done out of poor taste, but this season does it marvelously. It is beautiful. It's touching. 
Lois still has a lot of agency to her as a character and never feels like a character who's just brought down because of it. And it makes Lois a really strong character to a degree where even with her dealing with that, she is still a strong woman, a strong and capable character, and proves to be a force to be reckoned with. And Bitsy Tulloch's performance as Lois is incredible. I've always loved her as Lois, and this season continues to solidify why she is just amazing casting as Lois Lane, and this is by far her best work as this character within the show. Lois's cancer storyline also affects every other character from Clark himself to the kids, and so as even their friends and allies, and how it's brought to screen is just amazing, where week to week, it is such an emotional episode as we focus on Lois dealing with cancer as they try to help her, help her be better while also still allowing Lois to be a reporter and do things that she believes is right and by her. She gets a choice. She has agency of herself, which is really good for storylines like this. And it really goes into a lot of very mature topics and directions with Superman and Lois season three that even I wasn't anticipating and it paid off in spades. And then another thing I love about season three is the villains of season three. We got Shadow Coleman as Bruno Mannheim this season and he is marvelous. He is an incredible antagonist to Superman and Lois this season. And one of the things I was really surprised by with how the show handles Bruno Mannheim is rather than he's just the leader of intergang that sells weapons and wants to fight Superman and do what he thinks is right, we follow a Bruno whose goal is to save his wife. And how all that ties into his story where we understand why he's doing what he's doing and how it puts him in conflict with everyone else. It is just a really good surprise. Everything the season does with Bruno Mannheim, I loved. Chad L. Coleman is great as his character and I love the whole storyline with him and Pia as Pia, just like Lois, is also suffering from cancer. And how this plays out throughout season three I was a very big fan of how the story was told. And Tyler Hoechlin as Superman has always been great casting. And this show just makes him one of my favorite actors to ever portray the Man of Steel. And season three continues to solidify that he is still one of the best to ever don the suit and the cape. Because he delivers another spectacular performance as Clark Kent and Superman this time around. And I am just so happy for his casting and what the show has utilized with his character to where even if the season is a lot more focused on the more dramatic side of things and isn't as spectacle-like as the other two seasons, when we do get the Superman action, it's glorious. And when we get to see him as Superman, it is magnificent. But even as Clark Kent, he thrives. He really sells playing both sides of Clark Kent and Superman, and it once again shows in season three. Season three is the season with the most heart in there because of the lowest cancer storyline, and so is the characters having to stop Bruno Mannheim for what he is trying to do and how everything plays out with that. I love how heartfelt the season is, where season one and even season two has very lighthearted, upbeat nature to them. And season three is a little bit more emotional and heartfelt. And I really like that a lot where there are episodes at a time where Superman action isn't really the focus of it or there are episodes where there isn't any Superman action. And it's just about these characters and the more character driven nature takes over in season three. And that worked really well. For me, where even though I love the Superman action, the story and the character drama piece of the show is still very effective. And I like what a lot of the characters do this season, where this is my favorite Jonathan Kent has been on this show. Michael Bishop was the new actor to play the character after the previous actor dropped out. And he is amazing as John Kent. He, right off the bat, has a really good dynamic with Alex Garfin as Jordan, how he plays off of him, and how we see John grow beyond the events of season two. I like it a lot, and he, it really feels like a very seamless transition from having a new actor play this character now that we're in season three. And even with Jordan to where as much as I do prefer him in season two than season three, 
I do think the direction they take Jordan is very interesting considering now he has powers and now he wants fame and how does it put him in conflict a little bit with even his parents and I think this is definitely an aspect of season three that I was also pretty surprised they go into and especially with the relationship with him and Sarah now that Sarah knows the secret that Jordan has abilities and how does this play out with the relationship between the two of them it is very good and this season continues to utilize the themes of family beautifully that's always been a core staple of this show and it once again delivers in season three with the family feeling close to each other that they care for one another and that they'll do anything for each other it has never changed since the show started and it's still compelling this time around especially with a new actor for john and now that we are three seasons in with these characters and i'm still just in love with this show and this iteration of superman and lois and that superman mythology and i'm super excited to see where a season four takes these characters next considering a lot of the things that will be happening for this show as it goes on but one of the biggest surprises of season three is the utilization of lex luther abraham from the walking dead's actor michael cudlitz plays lex luther in this show and in just two episodes right at the end I was sold on his portrayal. He is menacing, intimidating, and it feels like a force to be reckoned with. Where right off the bat, this is a Lex who spent the last 17 years in prison. And obviously with Lex Luthor, we know he loves to hate on Superman and do things that would ruin his life and really cause harm for people. And this season introduces him marvelously, where even if he wasn't in it as much as a villain compared to Bruno Mannheim, he is still a character that is definitely used for bigger things in season four. And so as a villain who wants to bring a lot of havoc and destruction upon Superman and Lois because of what he's had to go through those last 20 years. And his performance is just amazing. And he really reminds me of Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin from Daredevil. And I'm super excited that the show now has a Lex Luthor. We've had The Eradicator with Tal Rowe. We've had Parasite. We've had a Bizarro. And now we had Bruno Mannheim. And now it's awesome that we finally have this show's iteration of Lex Luthor. And I am already in love with this iteration of Lex. And I cannot wait to see where the show goes next with him. The season has a lot of tension and momentum on so many different fronts from character dynamics, action, the villains, and so as the story as a whole. It's a lot more compelling and I'm still torn on which story I prefer more, this or season one. And I think with season three, it manages to keep that ever-growing tension at a really good pace to where each episode you feel like something bad could happen, something grand is going to rock the lives of everybody. And it definitely proves that in season three. And the whole storyline with Bruno Mannheim reaches an incredible resolution in episode 11. And how the show really continues to develop things from the dramatic side of things is amazing. I did not expect it to be this drama centric, but majority of the time it worked really well. And small things, I do think some of the teen drama aspects of the show is my least favorite side of it. And as much as I do like the Cushing family characters, I don't think they were the most interesting story wise to follow. So that was the only thing that it's not really a negative, but it's not as up to par as everything else this season. But as a whole, I thoroughly enjoyed season three. And I thought this is exactly why I love the show and so as the character of Superman. Now heading into spoiler territory and this is your only warning. The relationship between Lois and Pia are very good this season considering Pia is the wife of Bruno Mannheim and so has Lois being the wife of Superman and how both of them have cancer and they connect from that and so as Lois still wanting to help Pia even if she's trying to take down Bruno Mannheim was just a really compelling storyline everything the season does with Lois I was a big fan of and it's utilized really well and done really well considering the hard subject matter that the season is tackling and this show's iteration of onomatopoeia is also very good. Even if it's different from the comics, I thought it fits very well with the show and what we tend to expect out of it. 
and how the story of Pia as Pia played out with her being the wife of Bruno Mannheim, also being a mother who's struggling, also utilized very well. It gives Bruno Mannheim some motivation onto why he's doing what he's doing. And so as having Lois encounter things of how far she willing to go to stop Mannheim. And then another big thing of the season is a storyline with John Henry Irons, where his doppelganger was killed by Bruno Mannheim. And so there's a lot of beef between these two characters in season three when it comes to the relationship between Natalie and her new boyfriend, who was the son of Bruno Mannheim. And that is just such an awesome subplot in the season where we're seeing John Henry Irons try to deal with Mannheim however he sees fit, knowing that even though Lois has tr been trying to stop Mannheim for years, this is a character who's on his own front of trying to stop this character. And there's some really cool sequences here where that reminds me of why I really liked this character since the start of the show. And where the season goes with him takes him into very dangerous and interesting directions. And I was always invested in where the show is taking John Henry Irons. And so as just there's a relationship with Natalie considering she has a new boyfriend. And that part of the season is just very good. Although I like Jordan a little bit more in season two compared to season three, I do like how as a teenager, he's developing all these powers early. He learns x-ray vision and so as continuing to be a hero on his own to distance himself a little bit from Superman, even if it butts heads with him. And with where the show goes with Jordan is definitely one of the more interesting aspects of season three, considering that he and Sarah are now back to just being friends, how that affects Jordan and even how it affects Sarah. And that's where a lot of the dramatic side of things from the teenager perspective begins. And there are times where for the most part it worked and there are times where I feel like it's a little bit over dramatic, but seeing Jordan just really give into the fame that he's a superhero is interesting because now it reinforces how careful will Jordan be and that it's only a matter of time until somebody figures out that Jordan has abilities and before it becomes public knowledge and how Superman and Lois and even General Lane want to do whatever it takes to stop Jordan from being too reckless and careless and how that comes into conflict is great it feels like a natural step forward for Jordan as a teen and with someone with a lot of abilities like that one of the biggest things that come out of Superman and Lois season three was the ending where Bizarro is alive again after Anderson killed him in season two. And it looks like Bruno Mannheim has been experimenting on Bizarro in hopes that Bizarro could be the cure to save Pia. And Lex Luthor discovers of Bizarro and turns Bizarro into Doomsday. And that pays off a theory I thought we were going to see in Superman and Lois season two, where in the first three episodes, we see this creature in a suit and I thought that they were going to go for doomsday until we find out that it was bizarro and now that we see that bizarro become doomsday for Lex Luthor so Lex Luthor can get Superman killed as revenge that was gruesome and it was a really shocking direction they took things here right off the bat these last two episodes do feel like setting up season four compared to the rest of the season those are just still amazing episodes all on their own and how we see Bizarre become Doomsday is a wild transformation. And it makes it even tragic when you watch season two and you see how he was a Superman on the inverse world who gave into fame and it just ruined the relationships with everybody he's cared about and also wants to stop Ali from season two. And now he became Bizarro and then season two happened and then he gets killed by Anderson. And now in season three, he's been revived he has gone crazy and now Lex found him and turned him into a weapon of mass destruction. And that makes it all the more tragic when he becomes Doomsday because we all know when Superman fights Doomsday, stuff's about to go crazy. And it definitely goes berserk in season three. The action sequence there is awesome. It is exciting to watch and it doesn't hold back. It is a really jaw-dropping way to have the finale of season three play out as Superman fighting Doomsday because Lex got Superman's attention and has created Bizarro to become Doomsday in terms of the transformation. And that side was epic. It feels like they were going completely crazy. They were doing a lot of wild things that I really liked it was going for. And it got crazy when it looked like Superman may have defeated Doomsday and then Doomsday's alive and they fought in the subway. 
we thought Superman is done for, and then Superman fights Doomsday, and now they're on the moon, and then the very last shot of season three was Superman and Doomsday on the moon, and everybody's just reacting to what's going on, and Superman and Doomsday are coming at one another, and then it just ends. And with a cliffhanger like that, it's easily the biggest cliffhanger out of all three seasons. A lot of the characters are just wondering what's going on. Metropolis, Smallville, Kyle and Chrissy are engaged. And so is the fact that Chrissy is pregnant. And then adding to that, the whole thing with Jordan and Sarah. Now General Lane's been captured by Lex Luthor's people. And everybody is just watching what is going on here. And it is just a shocker. Now... Superman and Doomsday was not something I expected to happen in season three, even if I originally thought they were going for Doomsday in the first three episodes of season two. But now that we're seeing this happen, it's awesome. And visually, Doomsday looks great, and so does the spectacle side of things. So there's a lot of things in here that I'm really curious to see. Where is season four going to go with this, considering there's a big cliffhanger like this now that most of the cast members have been demoted to being either guest stars rather than series regulars and considering there's going to be 10 episodes rather than 13 or 15. So this is a big cliffhanger. I genuinely am wondering where they're going to go with season four. I'm thinking that they're going to be doing a Death of Superman Reign of the Superman adaptation. Overall, I love Superman and Lois season three. It's another amazing season of the show that doubles down on heart, drama, and emotional moments with the character dynamics while having a compelling storyline with Bruno Mannheim and Lois's cancer and Superman trying to do what he does best. And it is just so compelling from beginning to end. And it continues to prove that this is one of my favorite pieces of Superman media of all time. Why I love this character and why I love this iteration of Superman and Lois. And I'm so excited for where season four is going to go. We are three seasons in and it's still just as amazing as it has always been. So in the end, I'm going to give Superman and Lois season three an A absolutely thrilled with how great the season is i was so excited for it lived up to the hype and i do think that while i like season two i do think this was a step up from season two a little bit torn if i like this more than season one just because of how big of a surprise that was but nevertheless love season three if you haven't seen the show yet definitely do so if you're a fan of superman and dc and comic book media Definitely go check out Superman and Lois Season 3. I have no doubt about it that it will be great for you because this was just a slam dunk of a season with a great story and characters. And it leaves me really pumped to see where the show goes with Season 4 when that happens. So really happy with the show right now as a Superman fan. So definitely go check it out while you can. So yeah, that's my review for Superman and Lois Season 3. What are your thoughts on the season? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos I have planned very soon. I'm going to have a review for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 at some point within the next couple of days as I am seeing it very soon, which I'm so excited for. So stay tuned for all that fun stuff coming away very soon. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and at the description below. So please go do that while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more.